James Naylor was a Quaker who was sent south to preach by George Fox, the Quaker's founder. Quakers had a reputation for bizarre acts in the name of God, such as appearing naked to highlight their purity. Naylor, on Palm Sunday, 1656, rode into Bristol on the back of a donkey with fellow Quaker women lining his path with branches and flowers, similar to Christ's journey into Bethlehem. He was accused by MPs of blasphemy who called for his execution. Cromwell intervened, able to save his life, but not to stop him being flogged, bored through the tongue and imprisoned. Cromwell saw him as a fool, the nation saw him as evil, someone who was threatening the very nature of moral and social discipline. Last lecture, we looked at the changing religious nature of the Church of England, Anglicanism, from the Jacobethan settlement into the Armenian reforms of Archbishop Lord. This lecture will look at the restructuring of the Church into the Puritan Presbyterian Church, losing its desire for religious toleration. The intention for this lecture is for you to be able to express why Presbyterianism failed to replace the Anglican Church established by Charles and Lord with an established church welcomed by all. Knowledge-wise, you will consider the impact of the apologetical narration in 1644 on the push for a tolerant church. Skills-wise, in the associated materials you will continue to develop your historical thinking skills. And behaviourally, you will be developing reasons for why Presbyterianism failed to be imposed on England during the Interregnum. When talked about religion or politics in the 17th century, it is vital to remember they are symbiotic in nature. They need each other to survive. There will never be a religious decision or action which does not have a political one, and vice versa, a political action will always have a religious impact. When Parliament returned in 1640, it set about opposing the Armenian reforms of Charles I and Archbishop Lord. Not only was Wentworth impeached in 1641, so was William Lord for his actions in regards to creating a religious state within the state of Britain. He was to eventually face trial for treason and execution in 1645. In December 1640, the Root and Branch petition attempted to remove the root of all the problems in the church. 15,000 Londoners signed it. Imagine the Church of England like a tree, with each leaf representing one of the many churches throughout the land. In the Root and Branch petition it was stated that the problems of the church were a result of the problems in the root. The petition stated that issues and problems visible in the branches of the churches were many. Summed up, the petitioners felt issues such as the agency of ministers to preach the truth of God, such as the doctrine of predestination, or their interpretation of sin, the Sabbath, and the observation of the Sabbath, the restriction on the ability of ministers to preach freely, the bribery of ministers for special treatment, pluralism and quality of ministers, and failure to monitor vices in the parishes. In the Root and Branch Petition of December 1640, it blamed the issue in the branches on the idea of episcopy, meaning archbishops, bishops, deans and the archdeacons were the cause of the issues. By removing bishops, the root of the problem will be healed and spread to the branches. By 1642, Parliament had managed to pass laws which removed bishops from the Privy Council, therefore being unable to advise the King any more and also from the House of Laws, removing the bishops from the possibility to derail future religious law. Nevertheless, bishops remained as a rank within the church, and still influenced the running of the Anglican Church of England. This inability or lack of conviction in removing bishops is more to do with the fact Parliament was more anti-Lord than a desire for a Presbyterian Church of England. This claim can be supported by the fact in 1643, when the Sodom League and Covenant demanded, in response for Scottish help in the Civil War, a Presbyterian Church in England, there was very little support, a lot less than the removal of Lord and his ministry. After Parliament's agreement to the Solemn League and Covenant in 1643, it was not until 1645 when they agreed the Church was to be Presbyterian in style. 
1646, Parliament passed laws to dismantle episcopacy and commit to Presbyterianism. However, Parliament's unanimous backing of Presbyterianism was lacking due to a minority group of five producing a document known as the Apologetical Narration early in 1644. Parliament began to split into two groups, the political Presbyterians who supported a narrowing of the church in England to a Presbyterian one, and the political independents who followed the ideas of the apologetical narration. The narration was a simple idea. It agreed with a national established church, in this case a Presbyterian one. However, outside of the national church, independent churches could be established. It was not to be a replacement or a call for toleration, but if allowed would lead to such. The newly established New Model Army was a natural breeding ground for radical thinking, and the New Model Army developed a collective identity. The ideas of toleration for religious groups outside of the established church was an attractive one to many members. After 1645 and the Battle of Naseby, as the New Model Army moved across the country, talking with nonconformists in other areas, support for the ideas in the narration grew undermining Parliament's push for a single Presbyterian established church in England. The reaction of Parliament to the new model army's role in spreading the ideas of the narration was both hostile and counterproductive. Parliament attempted to disband the army in 1647, due to the end of the First Civil War, while waiting on Charles's response to the Newcastle propositions. When Charles I was handed over to Parliament by the Scottish in 1647, and the attempts to disband without the payment of back pay, the new model army became increasingly politicised. This led to a series of events. Charles believing his enemies were divided and therefore weak, which emboldened him to launch the Second Civil War, which resulted in the purge of Parliament and ultimately the execution of Charles I. These events had the opposite effect for the Presbyterians. Rather than strengthening the Presbyterian Church, there was an increase in the demands over the rights of individuals in regards to their own conscience and complete religious toleration for all. The rough Parliament's reaction to the demands of religious toleration was one of conservative backlash. The Blasphemy Act of 1651 saw severe penalties for radical religious activity. The end of the wars in Ireland and Scotland saw a desire for a restoration of religious and social discipline. However, the Rump Parliament was dissolved and religious focus passed to Oliver Cromwell in 1653. For Cromwell, he had three clear objectives. Firstly, a reform of government by a parliament. Secondly, to build a godly society. And finally, a reformation of manners, ensuring people lived a morally virtuous life by following the word of God. For Cromwell, it really was a matter of compromise because in most cases his objectives were incompatible due to many people's reactions to his dissolution of the rump. However, as long as those who were outside the established church met discreetly, Cromwell left them alone. For Cromwell, the ability of the members of the clergy was paramount. He established a committee called the Triers and Ejectors, who ensured that the ministers were competent, well-educated and capable of preaching the word of God. Most churches were able to run, meaning the parliamentary push for Presbyterianism was not successful due to enclaves of non-conformists. This includes Catholic and Armenian churches who naturally posed a risk and were not generally tolerated. However, if discreet, they were left alone. Quakers, when they attempted to spread their word, faced persecution, such as the James Naylor case in 1656-57. The secret to success for non-conformists during the Protectorate was discretion and not causing harm to others. If you follow this, you are entitled to find your own way to God, a liberty of conscience. Mosaic law was imposed, meaning the word of God was followed in law, such as the Blasphemy Act, dealing with taking the Lord's name in vain, and the Adultery Act 1651, ensuring piety of the population. In 1655, Cromwell also allowed Judaism to be legally practised in England, the first time since their expulsion in 1290. The attention for this lecture was for you to be able to express why Presbyterianism failed to replace the Anglican Church established by Charles and Lord with an established church welcomed by all. Knowledge-wise, 
you need to consider the impact of the apologetical narration in 1644 on the push for a tolerant church. Skills wise, in the associated materials, you will continue to develop your historical thinking skills by considering the factors for the failure. And behaviourally, you will then need to develop reasons for why Presbyterianism failed to be imposed on England during the interregnum by expanding on the factors. Now complete the associated materials.